Hello, freshmen. Today, we are going to do a mini lesson about plagiarism and in-text citations and quoting and paraphrasing and work cited pages. Uh, so first, this all is predicated on this idea of plagiarism. And there are two types of plagiarism that we see in academia. Uh, the first is intentional plagiarism. Uh, intentional plagiarism is where the student or author is copying something on purpose. They are cheating. Uh, they are copying entire documents and then putting their name on it. Uh, they're going on the internet and they're searching for essays and then once again copying them and putting their name on them. They're cutting and pasting from uh, other students' essays and they're copying sections. Um, it is a desire to cheat, to not do your work and uh, get out of doing work and get a grade for it. So that's intentional plagiarism. We don't see intentional plagiarism at Pomona very often. And when we do, it's fairly blatant because I read a lot of my students' writing and I can tell when uh, I read something and the word choices or syntax is better than what this uh, student usually does or uh, you know there's a variety of different indicators and it's really easy to catch all I can all I have to do is copy and paste the essay into Google and I can usually find where it came from um, there's also uh, internet sources that I can use to uh, track down plagiarism things like that um, so that doesn't happen very often but we have to be careful with it the other is unintentional plagiarism so unintentional plagiarism is far more common with students and it's essentially the misuse of sources. It's when we don't include in-text citations for our quotes or paraphrases or we don't include a works cited page or uh, we just, it's usually a result of laziness. Uh, these students don't want to cheat. They just uh, are not doing everything that they should to make sure that their essay is following the conventions of MLA standards and they just uh, you know they always say that they forgot to put in um, their in-text citations or their works cited page we have to guard against both and uh, both of them are a form of plagiarism and at Pomona High School the rules for plagiarism are if you plagiarize whether it's intentional or unintentional you get a zero on the assignment and or you could get a zero for the class. Now usually when I come across unintentional plagiarism, I give them uh, you know, the benefit of the doubt, especially if it's the rough draft. I say, hey, you gotta fix this. And a lot of times students will fix it for their final draft. But if I do see unintentional plagiarism in a final draft, I will give a zero. Uh, for intentional plagiarism, that usually is much more serious and that's where we're looking at giving you a zero for the entirety of the course sort of idea. So those are the two types of plagiarism. Um, what we can do in this day and age that's really cool is we have all of this technology. So this is uh, uh, one of our mentor texts. This is a, an essay and um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to uh, do your in-text citations in your works cited page so that you can guard against uh, especially unintentional plagiarism because I'm hoping that no one is going to uh, you know, intentionally plagiarize on their essays. So the tool that we want to use is EasyBib and if you don't have it I have another tutorial about how to get EasyBib but I'm going to bring up my EasyBib bibliography and I already have some things in here. So let's say that as I'm writing this paper I want to cite this article. This is one of the, the articles that this author actually does cite, Alan Peng. Um, so this is the article about this talking pineapple that it works with their, um, their topic. So all you have to do is come and copy the URL. You go back here, you click website, and you paste the URL in there, and then you search. And it should come up with, with you know, you just check and make sure. It comes up with the source. This is the exact source we were looking at because it was... It was uh, New York Daily News, so that's right, New York Daily News. We select it, and then it formats it for us. So now this is all formatted and ready to go. So 
Then let's say that I actually want to quote from this talking pineapple. When I want to put in my in-text citations, I just need to look at whatever comes first in the citation in my EasyBib. So here I see that it's a name of two people. We have Ben Chapman and Rachel Monahan. And I have to do a little bit of work to get that into the correct in-text citation. So I would say, you, you, in this case, since there's not page numbers, since it's an online article, it's, it's just the, the, the people's last names. So Chapman and Monahan. So then when I go into my paper and I quote from Chapman and Monahan, uh, I have Chapman right here, but I'm going to go Chapman and Monahan. Monahan. And now my in-text citation is correct. Um, even when if, you know, in this case I have a paraphrase and I still need to have an in-text citation because I need to show that I got it from, from a different place. Now in the case of this source, they don't have an author on here. They just have the beginning of the title. So you copy and paste everything that's in that beginning of the title without the quotation marks. And that is your in-text citation. So you can see here in this paraphrase, I paraphrased, and then this author put in opinion, how useful are standardized tests. That's, that's what you got. For this one, we have Rachel Bias built in the tests because there isn't an author. So that is what I put into the in-text citation. So here's the in-text citation for that. And that's what you would put into that in-text citation. Uh, down here, we have two articles by this Valerie Strauss, and that can get confusing because if we just start citing from Strauss, we don't know which one it is. If we only had one, then we would just do Strauss, just the last name. Whenever you have a last name, you, or whenever you have an author, you just use the last name. But in this case, we have two from Valerie Strauss. So we go to the second thing in the in-text, or in the, the works cited page, citation. So we would do how and why convicted Atlanta teachers cheated on standardized tests. So then we would put that, like we did here, into the in-text citation. And then for this one, we would do Pearson's history of testing problems, a list. That's what would go in, and that's what we put right here. Pearson's history of testing problems, a list. If, as you're writing, you're ever confused about what to do, you should pull up your easy bib and look at the source and then just say, okay, well, I'm quoting from this article, so I should use this as my in-text citation. And I always do that as I'm writing. I have this column up all the time when I'm writing papers. And if you come in and you see that your source isn't in there, you should add it. And so this is one of those processes that as we're writing and we're using sources in a paper, we should always be putting our sources into the easy bid. Um, then when we're all done and we want to finalize our paper, we have to put a works cited page on there because you have to have both the in-text citations and the works cited page. EasyBib makes it super easy. You just click this add bibliography to doc and then it comes and it puts the uh, works cited page down here. You just have to bold this because works cited page always has a bolded title of works cited. It shouldn't say works cited page. It's just works cited. If you only have one, then you take the S off. So it's just works cited. The works cited page should always be on its own page. And a trick, because it'll, you know, when you click this, it'll probably put it right here. You can put your cursor in front of works cited. You can go to insert and do break and do a page break. And then it'll put it on its own page and it'll always be on its own page. You also need to check to make sure part of formatting this is this is all one source. You can see over here, this is all one. And it should have hanging in dents. So we have the first line hang over the other two lines so that it's easy to tell where a new source starts. So I know this is a source, this is a source, this is a source, this is... So if it doesn't do that, then you need to trick it into doing that. And the way you can make that happen is you hit enter in front of your second line and then you tab it over. You hit enter, tab it over, and then it'll trick it into uh, making those hanging indents. But just remember that if you don't do these things, you are participating in an unintentional, unintentional plagiarism. And that can get you a zero on your paper. So you have to have in-text citations. You have to have a works cited page. And you use this column to check to see what your in-text citations should be by looking at whatever comes first. If you ever have questions, you can always ask me. 
and you can always come back and, and view this video. Hopefully that helps.